Well, hey, welcome to OJRA, folks. I'm going to have a rodeo as soon as we get done. I'll hurry. I probably won't hurry. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I'd like to hurry. I'll put it that way. So there's a little book called Zephaniah. Not Zechariah, but Zephaniah. It's in the Old Testament. If you're not looking real close, you'll miss it. But one of my favorite verses in all the Bible is there. Zephaniah 3, 17. The Lord your God is with you, and he is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you in his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Singing. Every time I read that, it messes with my head a little bit. I used to pray this over my daughters at night. There's one daughter right there. Hello, daughter. It seemed like a nighttime thing to pray. You know, in the daytime, you're busy, your eyes are looking at things you got to do and what you're doing, and you don't think about too much. You're just busy doing. But at nighttime, laying there in the night, it was good to know that he's with me and that he's mighty to save. And it's good to know that he was with my daughters and mighty to save. And he's with you. Seemed like a nighttime kind of thing to pray. In King James, it says, that first part of the verse, it says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. I love that. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He's right inside of us. He's in the midst of us, and he's mighty to save. He can, and he has saved you from death and hell and the devil and sin and yourself, and he's saved you to himself, and he's saved you to glory. And he takes great delight in you. He takes delight in me. You know, we don't think about that very much. We think, we know God sent his son, he died and paid for our sins, and I get to go to heaven, but I think some of us think we're kind of slipping under the wire. The door's about to close and we're slipping in. You know, in college, uh, if you made an 89.5 average, they rounded that up to 90 and gave you an A. I made a lot of those. 89.5 A's just slipped under the curve there. I think some of us think about heaven that way. We're just squeaking in. No. You see, the thing is that God has delight in you. He is delighted with you. Really. Really. He's delighted in you. Your picture's on his refrigerator. You're the apple of his eye. He loves you and is delighted with you as if you were the only child he had. He's delighted with you. In Isaiah 62, 4, it says, And you will be called Hephziba. That's a great name. We need to name some daughters that I think. Hephziba. It means I am delighted in you. That's a mouthful of a name, isn't it? But that's our name. I am delighted in you. I am delighted in you. And the next phrase he says, and your land will be called Beulah. We sing about it. Beulah land. Do you know what Beulah means? Married. God delights in you like a husband delights in his bride. God is delighted with you. We need to get that through. Well, I need to get it through my thick head. Your head may not be as thick as mine, but I need to get it in there. He is delighted with you. And then he says in that verse in Zephaniah, he will rest in his love. 
You see, in Isaiah 38, 7, it says, He has delivered us from the pit of corruption and cast all our sins behind his back. They're gone. You see, the prophet's looking forward to what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus paid for our sins. They're paid for. They're not counted against you anymore. They're paid for. And God can rest because the work of redemption is done. And he can rest over us in his love. He rests over us because redemption, what Jesus did, is done. He rests in his great love for us. Ephesians 2, 4, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ Jesus while we were still dead in our trespasses and sins. Oh, he rests over us and he quiets us in his love. He reminds us that we are forgiven, that we're made new, that we are safe, that we are his children, that we are his delight. And he rejoices over us with singing. Imagine God Almighty leaning over you and singing. He is so delighted with you that he's singing about you. Up in heaven, the angels go, there he goes again. He's singing. The King James says, with shouts of joy. He's shouting over you. When he sees you, he gets happy. Can you get that? Can you get it in your heart and in your mind? God is delighted with you. No, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I'm kind of a bad person. You know, I, you don't know what I've done. No, I don't. You don't know what I've done. But the thing is, his love is so great. He is delighted with you. Really. You've got to get that. Because it opens up everything else in Scripture to you. He is delighted with you. And rejoices over you <laughs> with singing. He gave me great comfort in the middle of the night. I could see him in my mind, leaning over my daughters, singing, singing, giving them rest, giving me rest, gave me great peace, rejoicing over them with shouts of joy. You know, going through the trouble of growing up from little babies to women, that'll wear you out. Boys to men, it'll wear you out. But there was God singing over my babies, giving them rest in his love. And in the middle of the night, it gave me peace, knowing that he was in their midst mighty to save, shouting for joy. We can trust him. We can trust his love. We can trust his salvation, his deliverance, his protection. Throughout the Psalms, it talks about his unfailing love. Psalm 31, 6, unfailing love. It says it several places. And in Psalm 105, it says, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever and his faithfulness continues through all generations we can trust him. You see, we're called the delight of the Lord. That's our name. In Psalm 107, 12, it says, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. In Isaiah 62, 12, it says, we are called the redeemed of the Lord. And in Psalm 107, it says, let the redeemed say so. We need to say who we are. We're the delight of the Lord. We're the redeemed of the Lord. And in 1 John 3, 1, it says, How great is the love of God that he lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And John says, and that is what we are. We're the delight of the Lord. We're the redeemed of the Lord. We're the children of the Lord. And we need to say so. 
You need to believe it, and you need to say so. Sometimes it's hard to understand that. It's hard to believe it. Romans 10.10 says, For it's with the heart that you believe and are justified, with your mouth that you confess and are saved. That's how you believe it. Does he love you? Yes. And nothing you can do to change it. Nothing. The question is, will you open up your heart to him and claim his love for your own? You know, some of y'all are thinking, that's all good. A lot of us look at the flip side of things. That's all good, but what about those good people I know that bad stuff happens to? What about me? Bad stuff happens. What's that about? Well, the short, most accurate answer is, I don't know. I don't think you do either. I'm sure it has something to do with the fall of man, Adam sinning and giving dominion to the devil and evil in the world. I'm sure it has something to do with that. But that's not specific, is it? That doesn't get right down to the person. You see, the question that that is, why does God let bad things happen to us? The thing about the gospel, the thing about the word of God is it's not to groups of us. It's to you. It's personal. He doesn't deal with us as a group. He deals with us personally. You see, you can't know somebody else's story, not completely. You don't know the inside of the story. You just know how they appear on the outside. You don't know my heart, and I don't know yours. I'm glad, both ways. But God does. God knows every secret place, and we are still his delight, and he loves us, though he knows us better than we know ourselves. Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God does. God knows it. But I can't know your heart, and you can't know mine. I don't know why bad things happen. There's not an answer. You only get to know your story. You only get to know your walk with God. That's why we can't judge each other. We think we can. We think we look and we go, oh, that's a good guy. Oh, that's a bad guy. You don't know. You just don't know. <laughs> but he is delighted with you. And he loves you. Will you receive it? John 3, 16, we know that verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. You've got to have it. You've got to receive it. You've got to claim it. You've got to believe it and take possession of it. If I sent you a package with your name on it, big one, and it got there to the door, and you looked at it, you refused it, sent it back, took it back to the post office. Don't want it. I know what's in it, and I don't want it. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't know what's in it. Oh, I know about that religion. I know about that church stuff. Nothing to that. I don't need that. Maybe you don't know as much as you think. Maybe there's more to know. Maybe it's worth opening up that box and receiving what God has for you. Understanding that you're his delight, that he loves you, that he's rejoicing over you. You gotta receive it. You gotta make it your own. Sometimes we get mail at the house, it's addressed to somebody else. We send it back. It's not to us. We reject it, we send it back. 
But see, God knows where you live. He knows your address. He knows your name. And he's sending you his love right now. Right here. Right now. He knows you're here. And he's here. And if you listen, you might hear him singing over you. Over you. Got to open your heart to him. You got to receive it. You got to take hold of it. Make it yours. That's the question. Will you receive his love, his forgiveness, his deliverance, his delight, his love for you? They're going to come sing a song. And as they sing, I'm going to ask you the question. Maybe you've skirted around the edge. Maybe you've thought about it, argued about it with yourself. Maybe you've never quite believed that God loved you. Maybe today is your day to come and receive from him this love he has for you, this forgiveness, this deliverance. Maybe you've done that once, but you've kind of gotten a little bit away. Maybe you've kind of turned your back, and maybe you need to come back to him today. He knows all about you. He knows everywhere you've been. He knows everything you've done. None of that worries him. He loves you. He delights in you. While Steve sings, if you need to come, come. Come to Jesus and let him prove to you his love and his delight in you.